TV. I am your host, Mark Fusco, here for another episode of the show, and um, I'm super excited about this. This is uh, a wine that um, I'll just probably put it out there. None of you have ever had. I know I haven't had it, but that doesn't mean anything. Um, in, in the spirit of, of getting out there and trying you know, stuff that I've never had before, I went ahead and bought this. This is the 2007 D Collection. Um, hold on. Sin, uh, Sin, Sinandali. Sinandali. I'm sorry. I think I pronounced it right. Um, this is a wine from the uh, country of Georgia. So, part of that former Soviet uh, Union. And uh, it is a dry white wine. Bought it at Specs for $10.71, and I believe that was my 5% cash discount price, um, because I bought it quite a while ago. And this particular winery was established in 1886, and I think it said 2007. So um, this style of wine, because this, this, uh, Sinandali is not, excuse me, is not the varietal is made up of, let me get to my notes real quick. Um, it is made up of two varietals. And uh, one is called Ricasitelli, Ricasitelli, and it's really kind of weirdly spelled and pronounced. Uh, it's, a, it's at least 3,000 years been, you know, they've, they've been making wine out of it for at least 3,000 years. Uh, it's one of the oldest varietals of, you know, wine varietals out there. It's native to Georgia. And then there's also one called Mitzvain or Mitzvani. Um, and that's the other varietal that is used in this wine. And it's a dry white wine. So let's check it out. I'm really excited to try something from the Republic of Georgia. So if I was just given this glass of wine and not told anything, I would think on the nose it would be similar to a Sauvignon Blanc, but I don't get like the cat pee part of that, so I would, I would not necessarily identify as a Sauvignon Blanc, but I get kind of the tropical fruit flavor, uh, aromas out of it. Though it's a little, you know, it's a little darker than I would think a Sauvignon Blanc, you know. I wouldn't, I would think it would be a darker Sauvignon Blanc. That was blended probably, you know, that maybe Sauvignon Blanc's in it with some of the other stuff. Interesting, but nothing earth shattering yet. This is definitely um, definitely tasty. It's a tasty beverage. Um, it's a uh, it's light. It doesn't overpower you with 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 a bunch of stuff. Um, but with that said, there's really not much going on with it. You know, I, I did say it was tasty, but it's more of like it has a pleasant mouth feel to it. And as I was telling you that, I got this hint of almond, which 
is very pleasant. Um, to get something like that from, from a wine, I had an almond champagne, uh, or almond sparkling wine, officially, um, about three months ago, and it was fabulous. Like, I'm not really big into almonds and, and nuts like that. I mean, I like pistachios, I like peanuts. Uh, almonds, you know, I can take them or leave them. So when they told me about it, I was like, uh, probably not gonna like it because they had a raspberry one and that was like pretty sweet. But the almond, it was like a hint, and it was wonderful. So um, there's not as much of that in there in this, but the, the, I did get a bit of nuttiness out of it. On the nose, I'm kind of getting more of a, a sugary smell now. So me talking about almonds and you know some maybe like a, a sugar coated almond. It's got a bit of acidity to it, but it's not. It doesn't kill you. It's also. Um, It disappears though pretty quick. It gets kind of watery pretty quick. And then it sits there for like for, for a little while. And then I got that almond flavor. So it's kind of like in the middle, it just kind of disappears and becomes like water. And then then it's like the water maybe like the water evaporated evapor evaporated. Evaporated. And you get this kind of nuttiness, but it's very, very subtle. And if you're not really paying attention, you would miss it. Like if you were like drinking this with a bunch of people. Uh, you just drink it. You you like oh it's 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 you know liquid. It's it's alcoholy. It's got it's not it's not harsh tasting, and you would probably completely miss the nuttiness out of it. Now I'm getting kind of a caramelized aroma. You know I. I want to like the wine, but it becomes too watery too fast. Um, and it, it's, I don't know. This is Sports Center. Find out Sports Center right now. Yeah, I got a Sports Center ringtone. Anyway, um, turn that off. <laughs> Point-wise, uh, score-wise, I don't want to give it a bad score or, or an under 80-point score because I, I could see this kind of being a, a total personal preference. I could see people really liking this because it's easy drinking, and if you chill it, it's probably going to taste really, probably taste a little bit better. Maybe, maybe the almonds might actually come through a little bit, or the nuttiness might come through a little bit more, which I, I don't know if it would or not. But and they might think it's like a mid 80s, but. I'm going to give it an 80. It's, it's, it, there's nothing wrong with the wine. Okay, it's not a bad wine. Um, it, it's, it, it seems like it's, it's made fairly well. I just don't, it just doesn't rock my socks. Uh, I just want to see if uh, there's anything here. For three years, it matures in oak barrels. Wine has a pale straw color. A fine, fruity bouquet. A mild and delicate taste goes well with fish, mushrooms, and cheese. I'm going to go with them on that, that it probably will. Um, it's not a wine that's going to overpower your meal. Um, you could drink it on its own. But, and there, there's some fruitiness to it, but like it just, and now it's like water. Like it, it's, it's like for like 10 seconds, you get this, you get kind of fruitiness, and then it feels like it just changed to water. Instead of the other way, instead of water to wine, it went wine to water. And then you'll get the nuttiness later if you're thinking about it and paying attention. 80. All right. Well, that's going to do it for today. Um, next week, let's see. Next week is, what, Christmas week? Yeah? No? Yeah. Next week is Christmas week. Um, news about Christmas or the Christmas episode Unfortunately, the ice wine I tried to buy, apparently the company said that um, they couldn't ship to Texas, which I want to call BS on that because nobody else has told me they couldn't ship here. Um, so, unless there's something about their state 
or their particular their particular wine shop and you know there, there are some really screwy laws about how much you can ship to Texas uh, based upon consumption I don't know it, it's it's a little complicated but nobody else has had any issues shipping to me so I don't know where they were coming from with that um, or I think I do but I think maybe they misread the law or maybe they read it right nobody else and everyone else is wrong in it. So we're probably not going to have an ice wine because it's very hard to find that stuff because they don't make it uh, every year. So I haven't figured out what I'm going to do for wines for Christmas. I do have more wines that we can drink, that we can review. I don't know, I don't know if I'm going to use those, but I'd like, to do another, I'd like to do a Christmas special, do three wines. And um, that's going to be it. I hope all of you have a wonderful weekend, and uh, we'll see everybody again next week.